Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer from jenniferwalkerzen.com. Hey, guys, how are you guys doing? I'm going to be inviting a guest today for us to, to talk to from Erotic Astrology. I just invited him now. Okay. Okay. Should be able to Hey. Okay. Now we should be able to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's try to figure this out. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Great. So, hey, how are you doing? Yes, I'm good, madam. How about you? <laughs> Pretty good. Long so, it's our time. first live here on Instagram together. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good to talk to you after a long time, I guess. We had done a recording a long time back. <laughs> yes, I know. I remember. So can you tell us, um, just introduce yourself so if wh whoever doesn't know who you are, of course, everyone knows who you are, but introduce yourself and tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, so my name is Babajit. I'm uh, staying in Germany. I'm originally from India and I have the channel Exotic Astrology in YouTube and uh, pages in Instagram and Facebook, of course. And I love to delve into spiritual sciences and uh, meditation, yoga, astrology, and of course, uh, Bhagavad Gita. And uh, as I said, the spiritual tradition of uh, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, and anything secretive, anything esoteric. Yeah, so... Uh, that's what I enjoy doing and I try to uh, stay up to date with uh, the events of astrology especially and I try to upload almost every day in YouTube. Yep, absolutely. So I was thinking for a good topic today would be like about self-realization. I think I had talked to you about that, but did you have any other topics that you would have uh, that you have in mind that you would like to talk about? No, I thought uh, that's a very good topic. So I thought, why not talk on that? <laughs> and yeah. It's such a large, broad topic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So self-realization is a very important topic because uh, if you read uh, the Vedic scriptures, uh, there we have a book which is known as the Vedanta Sutra. So, you know, for example, everybody must be aware of the Vedas, right? We have the four Vedas, uh, Rig Veda, then you know, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, Athar Veda. So, uh, but then they are very exhaustive, you know. Uh, but there is mm -hmm. one specific book uh, or other, um, it's like a scripture which uh, Vyasdev had written. Vyasdev is the Rishi, is the sage who had written uh, all the uh, Vedic scriptures actually. Now when mm. I say he had now when I say he had written, it doesn't mean that he was the first one to like uh, speak them, but he was the first yeah. one to uh, write it down with his hands mm. actually. Uh, this is before five thousand years back. Uh, so what happened was uh, that time uh, he by his spiritual power, he would foresee the people of today, like where we are living in this world today. And he would see that the people uh, 21st century or later, so the current period which we are living in is known as Kali Yuga in the Vedic mm -hmm. scriptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kali Yuga is like the current times which started roughly 5,000 years back. So he, he actually foresaw that the people of Kali Yuga, they will have very uh, less memory and uh, their... Uh, attention span, lifespan, uh, or their ability to grasp things will be very less. 
so in ancient india these traditions were like uh, only oral so they would speak the guru would speak and the disciple would listen mm-hmm. and then the disciple would pass on to their disciples like that okay right. but it was never uh, written uh, in like paper or something like this uh, because before kali yuga we had uh, dwapar yuga and in dwapar yuga the memory of the people it was very good now uh, mm-hmm. so there was no need to you know write down these things but then when vyasdev saw that it's required then he actually wrote down all this just to give a background and he had written mm-hmm. another uh, book which was known as uh, vedanta sutra actually so vedanta sutra as the word vedanta means like the end end goal the end result of the vedas mm-hmm. so in that he mentions there is a shloka which says you know athato brahma jigyasa which means uh therefore you should enquire about the higher truth now if you read the shloka you will feel maybe there is a grammatical mistake in the shloka because mm-hmm. uh, no no statement ideally even in english should start with therefore you know? so it's like therefore is generally after a colon or a comma can i interrupt you for a second um yeah. i have heard that in uh the kali yuga it is easier to uh realize uh to self realize in kali yuga because it's more difficult have you heard that too as well yeah you are actually right i was coming to that only <laughs> <laughs> so so when uh, so the vedanta sutra uh, says you know athato brahma jigyasa so this statement means that therefore you should focus on uh, brahma jigyasa which means you know self realization uh trying to know the knowledge of god and uh, trying to know who are who you are like you are a soul so trying to understand yourself and trying to connect yourself to god so uh and then he wrote this so as i was saying uh it seems there is a grammatical mistake in the shloka right mm-hmm. it starts with therefore so uh, so what actually it means is that the very fact that you are able to read this shloka it means right. you are a, you are a human being therefore that is why it starts with therefore can you believe it <laughs> so the pretext is you are a human you can read it therefore you should uh, go and uh, uh, seek self realization basically and then he wrote like so many other books and uh, he wrote the puranas and the, the upanishads and then he uh, as i said he wrote this vedanta sutra and within that uh, the uh, but even the vedanta sutra was very complex you know it is in a sutra form right. it's like sutras are like you know missiles you know it's like very short statements like athato brahma jigyasa yeah. so it's very difficult to understand sutras so uh, so even, and that is like the end of the veda so in the vedanta sutra he says uh, that raso vaisaha he says uh, the meaning of this is like that god is the source of all pleasure and happiness right he says that So yes indeed self realization is very important. Yes. Would you say there's two different paths to self realization because I've found that there's two different paths, two different ways to get to the self realization. One being uh, a mystical path and one being an occult based path. Um the occult based path is is a uh, it's known as the lightning bolt. Okay, I'll give you an example. So let's see this for instance, right? So this is known as the lightning bolt path. But if we look at the mystical path it's the middle way. Straight to God, straight to God, the middle way. So do you find that as well? I mean, do you realize that do you feel that there's two different paths or or is there one path? What's your opinion on this? Yeah, to actually answer your previous question first, uh, you had said uh, that maybe self realization is more easier in Kali Yuga. So if yes. you go to the mm-hmm. vedic tradition you will find you know there are like the four four ages are there there is satya yuga dwapar yuga there is treta yuga mm-hmm. and there is kali yuga so the current age which we are living in is known as kali yuga so if you right. go to the first first age which is known as like the golden age mm-hmm. uh, satya yuga so there the way to realize god self realization was found through uh, doing meditation actually <clears throat> all right and meditation doesn't mean just uh, sitting in a chair or mm-hmm. sitting down and meditating it was like very austere you know ashtang yoga was involved then dhyan yoga was involved like you had to mm-hmm. 
uh, you had to like uh, be a celibate you have to be like a monk and you have to go to the forest and you have to meditate for many thousands and thousands of years you know mm. that time the life span was also very long Right. and uh, after that you would finally uh, get to see god you know god would appear and uh, you would have spiritual perfection that time uh, mm -hmm. but that was like long time back you know and then we had the dwapar yuga which came next uh, so dwapar yuga the uh, method was you know actually dt worship like worship of you know god's uh, form mm -hmm. and um, then treta yuga was there so in treta yuga what would happen is we would do this uh, sac fire sacrifices like in vedic tradition we have doing yagyas you know it's like big big mm -hmm. uh, fire sacrifices, fire sacrifices. Where yep the priests would like offer mantras and hymns and chants and then they would do this so that's how the people would uh, get spiritual realization but the thing is uh, currently we are living in an age known as kali yuga so mm -hmm. in kali yuga what happens is it is said uh, asti hi ekan mahat guna which means uh, before that it says you know kaler dosha nidhe rajan which means this age that we are living in currently is like a, a ocean of falls you know <laughs> you yeah. will always see there is some riot somewhere there is some injustice somewhere there is some crime mm -hmm. somewhere never ever will you find that there, there is peace in this world never you will never find it right even if there is peace today in every corner of the world tomorrow there may not be peace right mm -hmm. uh, so it says this this world uh, this kali yuga is a ocean of falls but it is said mm -hmm. asti hi ekan mahat guna but there is one good quality in this and it is said you know kirtana deva krishna se mukta sanga param vaje these are some uh, shlokas i am quoting from the shrimad bhagavatam uh, mm -hmm. which is also very uh, high level uh, literature very uh, very pure literature mm -hmm. which was written by vyasdev so he says there is the, that this kali yuga is like a ocean of falls there are so many problems every day there is a problem you know in the government in the city in the state in continents yeah. you know within ourselves also our mind is not controlled our mind is uh, troubling us right but there is one good quality that by chanting names of god lord krishna you can Obtain spiritual perfection. So all so, you had to do is like do a jab, like you know, like jabbing, like talking, like just speaking God's name, just doing a mantra on that. Just uh, uh, what about like meditation and stuff like that? Yeah. So there are many processes, like uh, especially in the Vedic scriptures, like uh, nine different processes are recommended. Uh, mm -hmm. But among them, uh, among the nine processes, uh, the chanting of God's names that is considered to be the most paramount. So. <laughs> one process mm -hmm. is like um, as they say shravanam shravanam means to hear okay. so hearing about god and his past times his stories how he had mm -hmm. done like uh, great activities like in the vedic tradition we have the puranas which contain stories about you know lord vishnu then lord shiva so many and we have the itihasas like the ramayan mahabharat these are also there so one process is by shravanam because when you constantly keep hearing about something or somebody then you instinctively develop an attraction towards that subject or towards that person mm -hmm. you either want to go and meet the person or you know you like you want to do something for the person or you want to be like that person right like uh, many times people they hear a lot of stories about you know like big business magnates like warren buffett and so many and then they get a desire oh i wish i could have met this you know bill gates or warren buffett or you know elon musk or somebody like this in my life mm -hmm. so why because when you keep hearing about their greatness uh, then you gradually get attracted to them and you feel my life would be much better if i would be able to meet them some day right the same okay. is with, the same is with any celebrity uh, so so similarly like in the epics uh, of uh, vedic ancient, ancient vedic india we have lot of different epics or even if you are from a different cultural context like within mm -hmm. christianity or you know like islam or J judaism or zoroastrianism like buddhism so uh, or sikhism jainism uh, so whichever tradition you are belonging to if you listen to the ancient stories of how god had helped uh, his followers in the past and you know how how he actually works through so then you will get a desire to meet him so that is one process the other one is uh, kirtanam first one was shravanam then second one was kirtanam 
kirtan means to uh, speak about god right mm-hmm. so kirtan also means uh, to chant god's names like uh, do a japa um, and kirtan also means to spread the knowledge of god like to preach about the holy message uh, to preach about the greatness of god so uh, so kirtan means whatever you heard you speak it through your mouth now So you are hard to come from particular I'm sorry to interrupt is there a particular god name that we should chant or is it what whatever god name that we're drawn to Uh well yeah initially well we can see whichever tradition inspires us the most it, it's not mandatory mm-hmm. that you are born in a like a christian family or so you have to follow christianity or you are born in a hindu family you have to follow some hindu god it's not like that. so initially mm-hmm. we can see Uh, which god we are most inspired by we can read about all these uh, so many personalities and then uh, gradually we can uh, then gradually what happens is we uh, come to learn ourselves you know what is happening and then that dt uh, also starts manifesting through us and gradually gradually if you talk from the vedic cultures perspective uh, as uh, most of as the scriptures clearly declare that uh, from a vedic perspective that lord vishnu he is the supreme among all the all the other devatas like you know brahma shiva indra and we have all the nine planets of course mm. so lord lord vishnu he is uh, as uh, he his incarnation lord krishna he had spoken the bhagavad gita in the battlefield of mm. kurukshetra so in that he says to his uh, friend and his disciple arjuna uh that uh, i am there in everybody's heart you know he says ishwara sarva bhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishtati so he says i am there in everybody's heart you know so mm-hmm. so so he is essentially saying that god is there in everybody's heart right so therefore uh, you can see whichever uh, deity you are inspired by and then gradually if you elevate uh, yourself then you will uh, gradually be able to worship lord vishnu again and uh, for that it's essential uh we have a strong association of a spiritual community who is where people are doing sadhana where people are doing the japa and uh, people are actually experiencing spiritual life so we is should is it also to... important though even with with speaking uh a spiritual name or god's name to do moral practices you know i i feel like um i i in, in the christian religion because i could speak on that you know i feel like there's people who go to church and they pray a lot but they don't practice what they preach you know what i'm saying so how do you expect to discover god if you're not practicing what you're preaching you're not practicing what you're learning you know i feel like also a huge part of that is moral practices and being cognizant of your behavior and what you're doing yeah so the thing is um, there is a word you know um, there are two words in the vedic scriptures one is you know prachar prachar means to like preach okay Mm-hmm. but like anybody can do preaching anybody can say uh, speak about god but then there's another word which is known as achar so achar means to lead by your own example to set a good example mm-hmm. actually so therefore it is said that one should not do prachar unless one can do achar which means once you can follow what you speak you should not go and preach right now of course mm-hmm. this this does not mean that you have to be like 100% perfect you have to be this like big enlightened person you know you have to be like above all and then only you can speak it doesn't mean that you have to completely purify yourself but the trust of this statement is that we should uh, have some decent sense control within ourselves and only then we should uh, preach to others about the message of god or you know, a- any scriptural tradition that we are inspired by at our level so basically we should always check that uh, we should be doing the spiritual practices like as you said many people they will go to the church like uh, within christianity there is this tradition you know that oh you go and confess to the father and everything is mm-hmm. just done you know all your sins will magically evaporate exactly Actually, even in hinduism in vedic tradition also this is there like people they will do all sorts of nonsense they will do wrong activities and they will go to the holy river ganges ganga river and then they will close their uh, eyes and they will close their ears and they will close their nose and they will go and dip them inside and then they will mm-hmm. immediately come back and they will say oh mother ganga mother ganges which uh, like the river ganges is like the mother 
So the mother has taken all of our sins. You know, it is like Jesus has taken all of our sins on, on right. our behalf. So similarly, Mother Ganges has taken the sins, right? But right. Uh, but the thing is, it is very important that when we are doing that, we have regret and repentance within us, right? That if if mm -hmm. even even after trying and trying and trying, we we are still unable to do that, then once in a while, if things are not under our control and we are not able to follow, then we may go and confess or we may go into the Mother Ganga like once in a while. But it should not become a daily affair, right? That, mm -hmm. oh, every week I'm, uh, I take alcohol and every Sunday I'm going to the church and I'm just <laughs> confessing to the Father. So, so by that it doesn't work. So, so these, these uh, prescriptions are there that you, if you have done something wrong, you can go and you can confess to the Father or you can like uh, go and dip yourself in the Ganges uh, and come out of it. But these are not to give us a license to do anything that we like, right? So these mm -hmm. are like reserved for extraordinary times that when even after trying our best, we could not do something. And we have deliberately taken the right steps to work on it, to work on ourselves. And after so you're bringing that, up a good point. Then. You're bringing up a good point because we're talking about desires because that's really what we're talking about here. So is it important for us to to relinquish all of our desires or most of our desires in order to have self-realization? Yeah, this is a very good question. Um, so uh, with, within the Vedic scriptures, uh, there is like different explanations for this. But there is one clear explanation. If you ask me that, should I fulfill all my desires and then should I go for self-realization or should I not fulfill mm -hmm. any desire and then go? Well, the thing is, uh, first of all, we have to understand that uh, in the Vedic scriptures, it is very clearly distinguished between what kind of materialistic desires you are allowed to fulfill and what kind of materialistic desires you should give up, which means you should stay away from fulfilling them. All right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one, one very common example, like people ask me sometimes that, Oh, should I remain a celibate, a brahmachari and go to the forest and not marry a woman? Uh, or, you know, sometimes ladies ask the same. Is it allowed to marry and can I have spiritual progress without, you know, uniting with a man or, or without right. having a family? So this is a very commonly asked question. But the thing is, if you read the Vedic scriptures, there are two parts. One is the uh, monkhood or celibacy where you are staying in a temple under a guru and then you are doing... Uh, 24 by 7, you are engaging yourself in spirituality. But the thing is, 95% uh, of the people will not be able to do that because they may have uh, materialistic desires which may not allow them to do that. So therefore, the Vedas and even within Christianity or any religion, uh, it is advised to get married for somebody who can't stay like a monk. So in the mm -hmm. Vedic tradition, it is said first 25 years, a man should live like a celibate. Uh, he should not uh, indulge with any woman and he should try to control his mind and senses and stabilize himself first and have a purpose in life rather than, you know, as soon as you have reached puberty, you know, you are just uh, going around uh, doing whatever you want with how many of our women, right? So that spoils mm -hmm. your character, actually. So, so the first 25 years is spent on self-building and uh, getting to know yourself, know God and your gurus. But then after 25 years, uh, he's given a choice that yes, uh, you, uh, you can either uh, stay in the ashram uh, as a celibate, as a monk, and uh, you can continue like this. And then after 50, 60 years, he becomes a sannyasi. He renounces the entire world. And then, or... After 25, you are given an option. If you feel you can't stay like a celibate or a monk, you need a woman, then, well, yes, you are permitted to go and get married. But you are only permitted to go and get married to one lady, not more than one, right? <laughs> this kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Amish. Uh, the Amish in their tradition, they uh, actually, before they, you know, will, you know, embrace God, they'll tell them to go out, enjoy yourself, and then come back, you know, and some of them don't come back, some of them do. So it's like, how are you supposed to really realize what God is or want to even go on that path if you haven't been there first, right? I do yeah. feel like to a certain extent, uh, 
just to go right into a, a spiritual practice, you know, as a young person and not being out there and seeing what the world has to offer really won't, uh, you know, you're going to have all these desires built up within you. And then when you get to a point where you're like, wow, I wasted my, or you're going to have a sense that I've wasted my life because, you know, I went that way, but then I have all these people that I know that are doing this and doing that. So would you say that it's better for a, a person to kind of like go out there and, you know, just kind of live life for a bit before they're realizing that, you know, this is the path for me? So, That's what uh, I'll have to do. <laughs> yeah. So as, as I said, uh, in the Vedic scriptures, it is very clearly said that till 25, you should be a celibate. Not, not mm -hmm. celibate doesn't just mean, you know, you are a monk and you are not having any uh, female partner with you. It doesn't mean that. It means the word Brahmacharya has a lot of meanings in a, uh, at different levels. Like Brahmacharya, mm -hmm. celibacy at one level, it means you are preserving your semen as a man. You are not uh, uh, wasting it. But at one level, it also means you are doing uh, chintan on Brahma. So Brahma Achar, right? That's the word. Brahma Chintan means you are thinking about spirituality. You are thinking about God. So when mm -hmm. one stays like that for 25 years, then uh, um, then the man has to decide that can I continue this life of asceticism and uh, can I stay like this for the rest of my life or right. do I feel that oh, oh I have some emotional needs or maybe I will be better off with a wife or you know with children or with my family or do you feel like that so then the person is allowed to have some level of enjoyment the person is allowed to get married there he can experience you know sensual pleasure he can experience, mm -hmm. uh, he can have a home and he can have a family. He can take some trips to abroad if he wishes sometimes. He can see the world. He can have a good time. He can uh, like, uh, yeah, and he can have a good time with his family and uh, he can have friends like, uh, and then, uh, but that is to be done in a restricted amount. Like, uh, for example, uh, if a man says, oh, uh, yeah, you know, Oh, anyways, I am allowed to go out, go out after 25, right? So why only one lady? I can marry, you know, like 10 ladies. I can <laughs> That's stay a good 10 question. I literally yeah. just heard this the other day. Somebody was talking about the fact that, you know, uh, you know, marriage is a European concept, you know, with one man and one woman and so forth, so on. So what is your belief system on that? Like, do you feel like a man could have more than one wife or, you know, you know, is that right? Is that, you know, out of that practice if it's not for desire purposes more or less to just have a bigger family i don't know you know who's, who knows the premise of why people do what they do so what's yeah, your thoughts very, on that? Uh, yes very good question Yava. so in the past like in the vedic tradition we have had examples where a man had you know, more than one wife uh he had many wives like we have dashrat maharaj he had like uh, 300 wives you know and we oh also God. have we also have very rare cases like we have the example of Draupadi. She had you know five husbands, the Pandavas. So mm -hmm. we we have had examples in the past where uh, a man or a woman they have had you know, more than one uh, partner. Uh, but the thing is, uh, in the current age in Kali Yuga, if you go by the Vedic tradition, it is uh, in Kali Yuga like five things are prohibited, as the scriptures say. Uh, one okay. of them, one of them is you know having more than one spouse because in Kali Yuga, yes, because in Kali Yuga, what happens is our sensual and our carnal desires are so high, you know, mm. either either by ourselves or even if we are good and we are controlled, but then we see everything outside, right? People are just mm. enjoying, and our mind also says, "Why are you staying with this person alone?" You know, you you can also do that. What he is doing, what she is doing, right? Maybe you'll be happier right. if you do that. So in Kali Yuga, it is uh, prohibited to have more than one spouse. Uh, Interesting. And, okay. Yeah, at a time. But if if and if you cannot stay, you can uh, separate from that spouse, and then then you can go with somebody else. But uh, at a time, uh, it is not recommended to have that because uh, in Kali Yuga, like the sensual desires very easily overpower the the intelligence okay and then if mm -hmm. and if this is allowed then there will be like chaos and mayhem in the society but be, even before the society it is like uh, we will da we will damage ourselves even if you go to the recent history not 10000 years but if you go back to the recent history of the roman empire you know, so if you see the mighty roman empire you know why why yeah, yeah. 
why yeah, did it collapse? Yeah. yeah, so one right. of the prime reasons is, you know, there was like infidelity everywhere. You know, it's like nobody knows right. what's what's going on. So that was one of the prime reasons why this happened. So you will see every religious tradition in some way uh, wants to limit uh, your uh, desire for enjoyment. But it, it, it necessarily does not do it extreme. It doesn't say you can't marry and, you know, you will die if you marry. You will never reach mm -hmm. God. It doesn't say that. There are so many examples in the Vedic scriptures where people are married and it also doesn't say you should be a beggar and live like a hermit. You can be a billionaire. You can be like the king of the entire world. But right. the thing is, uh, the morning time of the day, this is a very important thing. Either you are a celibate or you are married, you are rich or poor. This is independent. What I am going to tell you now, this you should do okay. or rather everybody should do independent of their marital status their financial status or their inner inclination, irrespective of who you are, where you are. Uh, the Vedic scriptures always say that the morning time of the day should be exclusively spent for doing spiritual practices. Interesting. What time? What time is the best time for spiritual practices? Well, very good question. <laughs> so if you go by, if you go by the rule, the rule books, the law, then it is said uh, the Brahma Muhurta is a very very powerful time of the day. So the Brahma Muhurta is technically uh, about one and a half hours before sunrise. So if your mm. sunrise is at like, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning, so it's like around 3 to 3.30 that time. So, so it is said that whoever you are, you are a man, you are a woman, you are like 5 years old, you are 80 years old, you are a billionaire mm -hmm. or you are an employee, you are a businessman, you are self-employed, whoever you are. That time of the day, you should exclusively spend for doing spiritual practices. And when you do that, then what happens is you will empower yourself because that's like the time. Uh, and I can go to many references, which also says, you know, that uh, during the Brahma Mura, there is a drop of nectar which falls from the heavens, which if you, if you are awake, only then you can grasp it. So that gives you long life. It increases your sharpness, memory, intelligence. It makes you more spiritually aware, more spiritually inclined. But anyways, there are many statements like this. Good point. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, so is it important for us to be conscious all the time of our thoughts, even in, in when we're sleeping? Because, you know, you're talking about from, you know, be awake, or be aware or during this time. So is it is it do we need to be consciously conscious about what we're doing every day what our thoughts are because i've read that you know it's important for us to be conscious not only of our waking state but of our sleeping state as well and to become more and more consciously aware of that yes uh, you of know course. even so, in the dream state you're going into an unconscious state and there are things and lessons that can happen during the dream state that you know can affect you too Yes, very true. And uh, this is very important because, uh, as I said, the beginning of the day is very important. So if in the yeah. beginning of the day, we are wasting our time uh, by seeing, you know, politics or by seeing, you know, mm -hmm. where, 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 how many people are dying because of, you know, some like COVID-19 as of now or mm -hmm. what is going on in this world, uh, which celebrity is getting married to which celebrity Right. right or who got which price so all the materialistic things if we are if you are consuming our mind so then what happens is uh, that becomes like the disposition of our day we become very we may not become materialistic but we become very matter centric like for example we develop mind more, centric yeah mental more mental yeah we we become like uh, this uh, okay Oh, he got something. When will I get it? Like, he got a promotion in the job. Why did I not get it? He He's more uh, popular than me. Why am I not popular? So, why? Because that's the starting of our day. But in the starting of the day, if we uh, kick off our day by doing, you know, spiritual practices like mantras or in the Vedic tradition, there are so many stotrams which you can hear. Uh, you can read the like the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads or whichever tradition you are like the Bible or which, whichever book you are inspired by. And then you will realize that, you know, I am a very small entity. There is much bigger things in this world. You know, there are, even if you read about astrology, you will know, you know, there are nine planets and there are there's so many things out there. You know, it's like such big people are there. You know, it's like. Um, and I, I, I am important. It doesn't mean that I am useless, 
but i am insignificant so that makes us very humble because then we know like if you study the shrimad bhagavatam you will know you know like it says there are 14 planetary systems uh then they speak about swarga loka which is like the heavenly planets you know there if you see you're, uh, like, what you're basically saying is you're saying that we're operating from our lower self and we need to start operating from our higher self and manifest our higher self into this reality right because we were born when they talk about born again they're talking about born again talks about manifesting your spiritual self within this reality and that's what you're talking about everyone's going by their personality their ego and when yes. you listen to those things you are living in that ego and you're trying to be that person which you are not you're putting that yes. identity on but you're not that identity your yes. higher self is your identity yes and, and i know, always see you know if you start your day just by seeing the news or doing all this and you don't do spiritual mm-hmm. practices then what happens during the day you will see especially in the evening or in the day you will see that Uh, you will feel many things artificially which actually you don't need like for example mm-hmm. you may be earning very good in life you may be very happy but if you keep seeing the news or you keep seeing oh within your office what politics is going on right then artificially you will also start feeling oh maybe i am not earning good you know i should earn more only then i'll be happy i should get this mercedes benz or bmw bmw <laughs> or whatever some big house you know some so what happens is we will base our inner happiness based on external acquisitions which is very dangerous unless we have a big home we will think oh i am not happy i am not good enough you know unless no, i no, you, you're absolutely right and what's wrong with waking up in the morning and instead of saying to yourself oh my god i got up on the wrong side of the bed and just saying man i feel so blessed i feel so happy to be alive exactly. even just that i mean even just yeah. that most people don't do that when they wake up. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, yes. Oh my god, I had a horrible dream. Oh my god, I got to get the start of my day and I have to go get this done today and then people start to kind of think about all the stuff they got to get done in the day <laughs> instead of just taking that time out to be like, you know, to love yourself is also to love God. Most people don't even love themselves. I mean, you know, you have to love yourself internally. Give yourself that that hug when you get up and just say, "Man, I feel so blessed." Feel yes. so blessed. <laughs> and depend and depending on your day like uh, in the vedic tradition it is always emphasized that your activities of the day will define how your sleep is mm. so therefore like i get many people who say you know i am getting nightmares or sometimes i am i am getting dreams where you know i am flying in the sky or you know uh, uh, somebody is chasing after me or i am chasing after something right or i am chasing that's somebody all, that's all that's all imagery in your mind though that's what people don't understand is when you go to sleep most of the time these are karmic emotions that you're dealing with and you're facing yourself and if you ever got chased in your dream the best thing to do is you turn around and you you turn to that that thing that's chasing you and give it a hug <laughs> I've done it before. I swear I've done it before and it literally dissolves the dream. <laughs> it does and then you move into this this uh that then you start to get lucid and you're like, "Okay, I, I see that this is not even real." <laughs> yes, it, it, it is always the way that way, you know. If, if you are like too much if you are chasing behind something or someone in in your like conscious day d- during the day Uh, you will do the same thing in the night and if you are running mm-hmm. away from something you are running from something which you know you should not then in the night you will get desires like a tiger is chasing you or many times people tell me you know they get snakes chasing them it's like <laughs> <laughs> why that happens because it's like you are so much mentally disturbed during the day uh, yeah. in the night what happens your body has gone to sleep but your mind is so much fearful the mind is not able to rest the mind is active the body is like dead half dead but the the mind is active so the mind has to be in that same frequency right if you are so running... how do we focus how do we focus the mind like um so i would say that from what i can understand is there's meditative practices where well for first of all let's let's talk about meditation okay like um there's different forms of meditation there's ones where you close your eyes and one where you have your eyes open and i i would say for any of you guys out there that are beginner meditators you should have your eyes open because you first want to focus the mind on a concentrated object whether that be a sacred symbol or whatever 
And you keep focusing in on that, focusing on that, focusing in on that until your mind is a little bit more balanced. Because when you close your eyes and you do med meditation, you're automatically going to go into that dreamy state. You may fall asleep. So first thing you have to do as a beginner meditator is keep your eyes open, whether that be gazing on a candle or uh, a certain object. Right. So and uh, I think that's really the focus here is we have to start learning that we're, we're constantly thinking about other things. We're not really in the present state. We're, um, we're always somewhere else. Instead of being here, we're thinking about, okay, I got to do this. And, and hey, look, this is what happened to me in the past. We're not in this present moment. So then, of course, when we get into the dream state, we're all over the place. <laughs> we're yeah. in that fear-based mindset. So how can we overcome this fear-based mindset? What's your opinion on that, considering all the stuff that's going on right now in the world? Yeah, so for this, I think there are multiple steps that we need to take. Uh, there's like, in my opinion, there's not one any one solution to this. There are multiple things which we need to do. First is like, uh, we should try to sleep early as possible because uh, in the, in the mm. Vedic tradition, it is said uh, that the earlier you sleep, the better it is because they say, that from 9 to 12 in the night, uh, one hour of sleep is equal to three hours. Okay. Interesting. So you, you, will, you will always see you sleep one day at 9 or 10 p.m. and you get up at like 3 or 4 or 5. You'll feel very rejuvenated. But mm -hmm. you go to sleep at 3 a.m. in the morning or 5 a.m. in the morning and then you will get up at 12 in the afternoon and you, you will feel very moody, irritated and very cranky most of the times. Uh, there could mm -hmm. be some exceptions, of course. So... One thing is that we sleep early, and then second is we uh, put ourselves in ourselves in the company of good people. You know, so if we are putting ourselves in company of people who are always gossiping, you know, like finding bad in people, or you know, like criticizing the government or criticizing a particular political party all the right. time, right? Or criticizing some country, or criticizing some something, anything. It can it could be anything. It could be themselves, or it could be you, or some other person, some country, government, anything. Then well, no, everyone can... keeps taking sides because we live in the, the 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 aspect of duality. It's always this guy, that bad, this this bad thing, this good thing. You know, it's always a competition yes, going so on. Therefore, somewhere. we should try to we should try our best to stay with those people who are. In, in their own way, they are trying their best to see good in others. It doesn't mean that they are always saying good things to us. But it means that in general, overall, this person is positive and this person wants to do good. And uh, this person also stays in company of good people, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, we should stay in company of those people who actually inspire us to become better uh, financially, uh, mentally, morally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, right? So overall, we should stay with those people. Now, when I say we should stay, I don't just mean to stay. You physically stay. It could, it, it can also mean whose videos do you watch in YouTube, right? Because when you, when you are, because YouTube is like blowing up these days always. So yeah. therefore, most of the people are leaving TV and they are, you know, hooking up in into the YouTube channels all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, you have to check which channels are you seeing. Are you just watching some uh, cinema or some drama which is going on? Then, then what happens? Your own life will feel very boring to you if you are always seeing drama. You will feel, oh, I am yeah. so bored. There is nothing else in my life. You know, maybe I also should go and spice up things. You know. I should also have an affair with somebody. Only then I'll be happy right in this right. world. So therefore, who do you listen to? Who do you see? Who do you talk to? Who do you interact with? Right? So right. therefore, we should be very careful to give good inputs to our eyes and to our ears. That, that okay. is very crucial because that will decide to what extent our mind is peaceful. And then, of course, we have the tongue also. So through the tongue, we should... Uh, refrain from speaking bad about others or you know like uh, speaking things which are not good and also we should uh, be eating the right type of food like vegetarian food I like yeah yeah mm -hmm. so because there there's the proverb you know you are what you eat <laughs> yeah so, true. no it's yeah. true like if you eat the wrong thing just just guys i'm just saying if you eat the wrong thing like listen fill your thoughts like if you're eating like more organic vegetable based diets i'm telling you your thoughts won't race as much whereas if you go and eat a lot more sweeter things yes your thoughts tend to race a lot more you have a lot of songs going through your head a lot of lot of different thoughts uh, you know you, like you can't control your thoughts as much yes so it's true 
in short like uh, if you ask me to control the mind so i would say like sleeping early is required then say, getting up early is also very important then in the morning mm-hmm. as i said you know doing some kind of spiritual practice either it can be meditation or do chanting mantras or you know doing some yoga or even some health exercises can also be good and then uh, listening to the right people looking at the right things you know uh, as uh, i i think in the in the quran in islam it is also said you know uh, keep uh, keep your gaze low always uh, which means that uh, if you see some member of the opposite sex you, know, you should not just uh, go on uh, staring at them that's not very recommended and so so and of course uh, during the day you should be properly engaged right Mm-hmm. uh engaged materially or spiritually materially means like uh, you should not be in a career which you absolutely hate like you know many times people are into it and programming and then they absolutely hate you know they wanted to be into uh, singing or dancing or doing something creative or you know painting or you know sports but mm-hmm. then due to family pressure society pressure or you know fear of insecurity or fear of losing out as this you know fear of missing out for more they join you know i i, yeah. I actually know what you mean by that i know i know what you mean by that i was an accountant so <laughs> obviously <laughs> i'm not an accountant now but um yeah i felt the same way i was like very much because i you know had had my awakening and i was going to work and i just couldn't stop thinking about god and you know spiritual things and so forth i literally felt like i was going to kill myself i was like oh my god i can't i can't live like this this is not my life i can't live like this so i i quit my job and i took that you know that leap even though i felt like i was literally jumping off a building <laughs> but i was like i got to make this work because i can't live like this I can't be yes. like this. yes so well, i said that yes i agree with you you have to you have to live your passion you have to to um, go with what your heart tells you yes so mind control can be achieved it's difficult but at our level mm-hmm. we can we should uh, now we cannot aspire to have 100% mind control that is not possible because it is said only a perfect yogi who is fully aware of god 100% can achieve mind control but at our level we should have that much mind control that we can stay focused in our life in our career in our family in our health and we should not go to wrong paths and also we should be able to do things in a focused way so if you have that much mind control then i would say you really have quite good mind control so who you talk to who you listen to who you see who you interact with mm-hmm. what you eat what you do in the morning how are how do you sleep and what do you do in your leisure time right that is also a very yeah. crucial element in this in deciding what uh, kind of a mental stability you will have because imagine you are very well engaged in the weekdays and then there are those two days right weekends but like sometimes it's not a weekend it's like everything ends <laughs> all the, all the good things that you do you have been very good very focused very productive very uh, controlled in the week weekdays and in the weekend you know you are like taking some alcohol and you are just going on drinking or you are you are watching some movie some netflix or some adult material in the internet or you are just randomly doing nothing you are just sleeping in the couch and you are like oh i don't have office today right so i don't have to work i don't have to do anything no it doesn't mean that weekends uh, should be exclusively used uh, for uh, enriching our relationships and our spiritual life because the weekdays are consumed in our material progress right like spiritual progress mm-hmm. uh, so sorry the financial aspect career aspect uh, of course we do things in the morning but in the weekends like uh, sunday especially it should be used to do spiritual practices like going to the temple or going to the church or going to visit some nearby spiritual community that you have where people well, let's are... say you don't have, let's say you don't have access to a church or you know spiritual aspect uh, couldn't you set their own like temple up in your house and just do it that way as well i mean you can set a sacred space up for yourself and just utilize that space over and over and over and build that energy up as a sacred space yes so uh, mm-hmm. once there was a big guru uh, this guru was asked that uh, you say that you should be in association of spiritually like minded people right but okay. what if, but what if you don't have that association what you should yeah so then what the guru do? the guru answered very beautifully he said if you don't have association then you should create association <laughs> 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 
so he said okay. if you don't have that then no problem there are two things we can do one thing is at our level we can start to uh, share spiritual insights with whoever we meet within mm-hmm. our family within our friends within our relatives or maybe nowadays you know to strangers in youtube or instagram facebook right people that there you go. <laughs> yeah because many times our our family members may not be supportive our friends may not like uh, doing uh, like to see us doing spiritual practices right our spouse may not mm-hmm. be supportive our parents our children may not be like us but then if we share the knowledge that we have at our level and uh, number 2 secondly if we pray to god sincerely that please give me the company of uh, like minded people who also want to go ahead spiritually then mm-hmm. i have seen in almost all the cases that i have seen in my life like i have been doing consulting from last 15 years so i have always seen this either you are born in a hindu family or a muslim or a christian family or which which your tradition you have been born to or whichever tradition you follow irrespective of birth and anything else if you do these two things like you try to share uh, to whatever extent you can and you pray to god mm-hmm. then i have seen eventually one of the two things happen one one is eventually god will take you to some city or some place you know where you will find a community or you know some people will come to your city and you will meet them somehow you know that's like god's blessings you know it's by his grace it happens mm-hmm. or or if you don't meet them or nobody comes to meet you then you will create a community right then yeah. wherever you are that community will be with you via online by phone or by youtube or however it is but they will somehow remain in touch and then you will not feel that i am alone i am just doing my spiritual practices alone you will feel that yes i have uh, i have people who are also doing the same thing that i am doing so that means i am not alone that's a very big psychological conviction that we get when we see like imagine you are just doing meditation or you are chanting mantras alone you know you, you, as you said very beautifully you might sleep you might doze off sometime but imagine you are in a big place you know it's like a big gathering and then you have uh, like you know thousand other people also doing the same thing therefore in india we have this concept of satsang satsang is like like in the church we have this mass so it's the same thing so therefore in india once in 12 years we have this famous 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 festival it's known as the kumbha mela mm-hmm. which happens when jupiter enters aquarius so in kumbha mela uh, there there is big gathering like you know the entire population of italy like you know um, 6 6 crore it's like 60 million 50 million 70 million people are gathered during kumbha mela in uh, you know there are certain places in india like haridwar where there is kumbha mela sometimes so mm-hmm. so many people are gathered imagine the entire population of the country italy is coming there because once uh, because i stay in germany i had gone to italy why do i give this example because in 2019 i had gone to italy and there was a swami uh, there was a swami from india who went to you know, who had come to italy to give a, a seminar and he said you know <laughs> once i went to kumbha mela in india and he said uh, there were 60 million people there and the audience was fully italian because you are sitting in italy so you are talking to italians and then mm-hmm. when this sanyasi told the 60 million the the italians were very suspicious they were like skeptical is this swami out of his mind has he lost it or is he crazy you know does he know what mm-hmm. he's speaking and then somebody wrote it in a piece of paper and gave it to this speaker he, it was written my dear sir are you sure it was 60 million it was not less or maybe you have added another zero maybe it's 6 million then he saw and he just ripped the paper off and he said no it is 60 million 60 million people and then he said why why it can't be 60 million because in india the population is very big and then somebody told him that sir actually the problem is the population of italy is 60 million so for italians it's very difficult to imagine you know their entire country has gone to a, a spiritual retreat how how mm-hmm. can they think because they've never seen such a big gathering right in the west you don't exactly. see like huge uh, spiritual gatherings like you've seen in india you don't see it it's like okay so it's like let's think about it in an analogy like this we're like a drop 
And when we bring a lot of people together, it's like an ocean. Really? And that brings more consciousness level up into the people that are there. Right? It's and, like a transmission. Uh, yes. And the most important thing with a spiritual community is not just spirituality. It is not just that. See, because everybody has some human needs and they have tendencies, they have particular desires, which if they do not channelize in a proper direction, they will end up going to wrong places. Like for example, there's one person, uh, he told me once uh, that, oh sir, you know, I can't do any spiritual practices. I will never have a spiritual life. I said, why? He said, because, you know, I can only sing properly and I like to sing. But, you know, to do spiritual mm -hmm. life, uh, you need to like sit in one place and not talk to anybody, you know, like do some mantras and, you know, lock up yourself in the room. But I can just sing, you know, so I have no hope for, for spiritual elevation. I said, no, that's not correct because uh, you can uh, sing so many songs. Like in India, we have bhajans, like, you know, they're like singing the greatness of God, singing the beauty of God. Like for Lord Krishna, there are so many bhajans which describe how, beauty, how beautiful he was. You know? mm -hmm. So then I told him, you can sing these bhajans. Like there are, you know, like hundreds and thousands of bhajans you can sing. And then uh, after one, one year, he contacted me and said, you know, oh, now I am, now I am uh, so happy, so jubilant, so I feel so fulfilled because whenever I get up earlier, I used to sing some materialistic songs, right? Uh, oh, when I see your eyes, I see the stars, you know, these kind of songs I used to sing, you know, all the romantic songs I used to sing. But nowadays he uh, speaks, uh, he sings about God and then he's like, oh, I, I feel so happy. You know, and there was another lady who had told me once, you know, she's like, uh, she likes to paint always, right? So then yeah. she told she told me, I can't meditate, I can only paint. So I said, yes, uh, well, you can paint uh, about God, you know, you can paint about Lord, Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu, or you are inspired by some other demigod like Lord Shiva or, or anybody, you can paint them. And then you can paint them and you can meditate them, meditate on them, you know? So by that you can uh, inspire yourself so when we go to a spiritual community well, if you think about it if you think about it any creative endeavor you kind of go into a meditative state anyway because i know as i paint as well and i even remember when i was uh when i was in school i remember i was <laughs> was on a test one time and i got so focused i got so focused on this test and what was going on with this problem that i literally went into a meditative state it was crazy but it, it felt good but it was like crazy that it could happen from doing mathematics but anyway. yes you can do get so focused the point is the focus the focus people get very focused when being yes. creative whether that's yes. singing or dancing or creating something focus yeah. is always required focus is always required in fact this is the same thing uh, which i spoke on the video which i uploaded today morning you know I, that's what i was mm. speaking there how should you remain focused so that's what i said that if you want to remain focused you have to have a purpose. You have to understand mm -hmm. why am I doing something. If you don't have that purpose, you will get distracted always. Because yeah. so once you have a good purpose, then you will know. And then also, you should have some level of mind control, which you should uh, achieve by doing these things which we discussed. So once you mm -hmm. have mind control uh, to, to a considerable extent or to a good extent at least, and you have a good purpose, then it's very yeah. easy it's very easy not to lose the focus. Otherwise, uh, you will get give into distractions because they say, you know, distra distraction is alternative attraction. So, mm. <laughs> so you are not. I don't want to think. Okay. Yes. You are not. Oh, I was going to say, I don't want to take up too much of your, your your time, too much more of your time. But what do you want to leave us with as far as like what specific things? Like I know you're talking about the focus and the practices and so forth. So on. is there anything else that you want to add to that? No, this is uh, all that I would like to say here. In summary, I would like to say is like uh, whatever we are doing in life, either it's our career or marriage or spiritual life or our health, we should always have a good focus. Uh, we should have a good goal actually, right? And we should have mm -hmm. a purpose, not a goal necessarily. Goal can be short-sighted or long-sighted, but a purpose is more important. We should, we should always ask this question to ourselves, even for a career or for a relationship. Like, why am I doing this job? Why am I doing this business? 
what do mm-hmm. i want to who do i want to become after this you know or why am i in this relationship or who will i become will i become a better person or will i not become a better person or mm-hmm. uh, am i just doing this job for money well but then will i be happy if i just get money and if i don't have mental satisfaction and it's the same with everything like with health i see so many people doing exercises why are you doing exercises because you want mm-hmm. to look good in mem- in the eyes of the opposite sex is is that your purpose then you will be very unhappy because one day you lose it right? you can't be beautiful yeah. all the time so your goal to uh, health should be like i sh- i want to be at the good of i want to be in good health so that should be your purpose not like you want to look good if you have a good health then you will actually look good that's like a by product right Mm-hmm. and of course uh, the morning we should use for good spiritual practices and lastly we should be very careful to who we lend our ears especially ears and eyes what do you see who do you hear right mm-hmm. <laughs> so youtube youtube is all about hearing and seeing so hear good people uh, and uh, and in the weekends try your best to find a spiritual community and associate mm-hmm. with them and if you don't then as i said try to create a spiritual community so that will be all from my side <laughs> all right for so for me i want to leave uh you guys with something that we from the mumro institute and it talks about it's pretty much a, a thing that you should say to yourself every day i am more than my physical body because i am more than my physical matter i can perceive that which is greater than the physical world Therefore I deeply desire to expand to experience to know to understand to control to use such energies and energy systems as many may be beneficial and constructive to me and those who follow me. I also deeply desire to help and cooperate the assistance and the understanding of those individuals whose wisdom and development and experience are equal or greater than my own. I asked their guidance and protection from any influence or any source that might be providing me with less than the stated desires. So always have some type of mantra to help elevate that aspect of yourself instead of bringing yourself into that state of individual egoism, right? Always have a, a, a sense of a mantra that you say to yourself every day <laughs> to kind of understand that you are more than this physical this the physical being this physical matter That's yes, I yes. <laughs> very good very very good very good thank you so much for sharing okay <laughs> as so great having you on here i hope that you got you want to come on again i would love yeah, to have sure. you on again if you'd be interested <laughs> sure sure why not and uh, we would also like to have you in exotic astrology absolutely and also absolutely recording sure sure thank, thank you. you so much namaste thank you so much i appreciate you coming thank you yeah thank you All right. Bye.